What is going on everybody, it's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about the top 10 stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade, as well as some that you guys actually ended up calling out for this upcoming week. I guess you can say the third week of May in 2019. And if you did end up calling out a stock either in our Discord group chat or the comment section on Friday's video, I do appreciate that. And I think I'm going to get through every single one of those call outs. If not, I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. And typically, for those of you new viewers out there, every Every single Sunday, I'm uploading a video talking about a group of stocks that I'm watching and some that you call out in the call out section and the comment section that I'm watching for the upcoming week. So if you're interested in this type of content, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And let's just get into it, guys. So First of all, I want to just do a rundown of the entire market very, very quickly in literally under a minute. So the past week, we've been seeing a bunch of turmoil, a bunch of volatility. Trump hit China with new tariffs of really just increasing the tariffs from 10% to 25%. And this kind of came out of nowhere from over the past couple of months because over the past couple of months, you know, as the market has been recovering, everybody out there, investors, traders, you know, just generally everybody thought that there was a deal coming, right? A deal between China and Trump. He was leading us on kind of saying that there is going to be a deal. Talks with China are going well. And we got a bombshell on Twitter last Sunday, I believe, saying that Trump was going to increase the tariffs from 10 to 25%. And this kind of caught a lot of people off guard, hence why the market sold off pretty rapidly this uh, past week from 29.54. I believe it got as low as to down here, 28.30 ish. That was about a four, uh, three, four percent sell off in the S&P 500, which are the 500 largest publicly traded United States companies. So Guys, that's pretty much it. The rundown from last week. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on this, go check out my video from Friday. The video before this, you'll see Trump and the Twitter icon in the thumbnail. So just be careful this upcoming week. Another thing, guys, you know, this volatility might continue. I personally think it's going to continue, especially if China does end up retaliating somehow. If we get some more bombshells from Trump on Twitter, I just personally think the market is still going to be very, very volatile. So without further ado, guys, let's just get into these 10 stocks. And again, if you enjoy the content here, if you're enjoying the video so far, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. So let's knock these stocks out, guys. So Microsoft, ticker symbol MSFT, is a stock that's been getting hit quite hard, not extremely hard, but a decent amount over the past week due to the massive sell-off that we've had in the stock market, right? This is something typical when we see a big sell-off. You know, typically the large cap stocks like Microsoft being one of the biggest companies in the world, right? They get hit pretty hard. So Microsoft ended up going from $132 per share down to about $123 to $124 per share. And if we're calculating a margin of profit here, that's about a 5-6% potential margin of profit that was opened if Microsoft is able to get back up to those all-time highs roughly at about $132. And another thing I want to just throw out there, let's say the market does end up selling off. A lot of these stocks we're going to be talking about are most likely going to do poorly as well. So this video, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt because I don't know and nobody out there knows how the market is going to perform. And let's say the market sells off heavily this, this week and the next week. You know, a lot of these stocks might have no value unless they, unless you are, you know, shorting them. And I mean, and uh, by no value, I mean, sure, you can take positions for the long term, but if you're looking to swing trade them in the short term, they might not provide as much value because again, if the markets are selling off, these stocks are selling off, right? You might not want to trade or swing trade a stock that's showing a downwards trending pattern is what I'm saying, right? So kind of take these uh, picks here with a grain of salt and understand how the market can influence these picks 
picks that I'm going to be talking about today. But from what we're seeing here, and let's say we assume, or let's assume rather, the markets go up this week miraculously, right? You know, Microsoft is looking pretty solid here, and it's looking primed for a reversal. Again, we saw the pullback of about 5%. We're maintaining a higher low from the previous, meaning the uptrend is still intact. We're also holding the 180 simple moving average, this gold line you are seeing here, we're holding it as a support, right? So this is a very um pretty easy pattern to decipher, right? We're pulling back, uptrend is still intact, we're looking to fight the 50 SMA resistance now. If we, if we break that and the market looks positive this week, Microsoft is due, in my opinion, for a nice little run. So Microsoft is the first one, and we're going to kind of bounce onto another large cap stock here, which is Apple, guys. Apple has gotten squashed, I believe, harder than a lot of the large cap stocks out there. And this is mostly because Apple does have some Chinese exposure, obviously, right? A lot of Chinese exposure, if we're being quite honest, right? China, in general, is one of the biggest markets for Apple. So we can see here, you know, from $213-ish per share that the stock was trading at after they reported earnings, we saw that big spike. This one's literally gotten down to, I believe, $192 per share, which opened up a vast 10% margin of profit. So literally almost double the amount of margin was opened in Apple as opposed to Microsoft. But what we're seeing here, guys, is we did break the 180 SMA support, which is kind of discouraging in terms of holding a support that we've been holding over the past couple of months. But excuse me, what I'm liking here in terms of Apple is that we are still holding this critical support of around $190, which was a resistance from back in the middle of November and towards the end of um, uh, March in 2019, right? These were two levels of resistance. Since we've broken out of those levels, they've become new supports, right? So keep an eye this week. What I'm personally doing is I'm keeping an eye. Are we going to hold 190? Are we going to continue this downtrend pattern and possibly break 190 where at that point I'm not even going to be looking to swing trade or even take a trade position in Apple for the short term right because I at that at that point we may be going back down to the mid 180s if I draw this little uh you know trend line for you all here take a look from the um potential break here, we may be going back down to 185, which would be roughly the next support that we do see here on Apple. So if we do end up trucking back up into the 195s or rather the $200 level, rather we start to trend back up, the markets are looking like they're recovering. You know, Apple could be a very good bounce back play here due to the beat down that it's taking over or taken over these past couple of weeks. So now kind of flipping the script a bit, TVIX, is one that I'm, you know, very heavily watching as well. And this is kind of me playing both sides of the spectrum. Like I've been talking about in these videos during the turmoil we've been seeing over the past couple of days, it's always good to have a pick that will do well when there's a lot of volatility and downside to the market, which is TVIX, right? Just like it's also good to have some picks like two that we just talked about, Microsoft and Apple, that would do well if the markets were to bounce back and let's say have a very strong green day. So TVIX, guys, is an ETF that I'm sure a lot of you all know by now if you're new to the channel. This is one that I always trade when we're having a bunch of volatility when the market is selling off and it does well when the market is selling off and a lot when there's a lot of volatility, right? Specifically the S&P 500 and the VIX. These are two that you need to watch in terms of the performance of TVIX, right? And we can see, you know, over the past week, we went from literally 19 all the way up to about $32 when the market took that dip and we saw a bunch of volatility. So let's say the market continues to sell off, right? This is again playing the other side of the spectrum here on the negative side if the market continues to sell off. TVIX is going to be a very good play, right? But let's say the market bounces back and we start to head to all-time highs again. This is one that I'm not going to be watching and I'm going to be trading mostly Apple, Microsoft, some of these large cap stocks that have taken a beating over these past couple of days of selling off. So TVIX, definitely one on the list. Roku is another one that I've been getting requests on. People have been asking me about 
Roku stock. And this is one that I track in terms of technicals, but I don't track too much in terms of the performance of the actual business. But from what I understand here on a brief surface, they reported fantastic earnings, hence why the stock went from $62 all the way up to, let's say, almost $90 per share. And I didn't really break down the earnings too much. If we can see here on the live news, you know, we've seen some, um, you know, analysts, you know, raise their targets on stocks. That's pretty uh, positive in some cases, right? This one raised it to 90, 90 here. This other one raised it to 70. So that's positive sentiment around the stock in general. Trying to see the earnings here. Earnings per share. Okay, take a look at that, guys. They were supposed to be um, in the red on EPS of 25 cents per share. They came in at 9 cents in the red in EPS. So that's amazing in terms of the beat. Sales came in at 206 million versus the uh, 191 million expected. So they beat considerably on sales and almost a more than actually a double beat on EPS. So earnings in terms of the two key metrics that a lot of people watch EPS and uh, sales, they were absolutely amazing, right? Hence why the stock went literally parabolic, right? From 62 up to nearly 90 per share. I believe it was a 30% move in that stock. So what is this move really doing on a technical basis? In my personal opinion, it's bringing the stock to a very overbought status. Take a look at the RSI here, the relative strength index. We use this indicator to understand whether a stock is overbought or oversold based off of these two thresholds here, the 30 threshold and the 70 threshold. When these lines are getting closer to the 70 and surpassing the 70, that means there's a lot of buying, overbought, overbought, right? It might not be the best time to hop in just based off of the one indicator, right? And on the flip side, if these uh, lines are getting closer to 30 and they're getting below 30, that means it's oversold. People are selling, 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 and it may be a better opportunity to hop in, right? And we don't base our decisions. I don't base my decisions off of just one indicator, but I like using a bunch in unison, to make my decisions, right? So Roku, you know, we're noticing, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, RSI, again, very overbought. And in terms of previous levels of resistance and support on the three-year week, we can see, okay, we clearly broke out of $72, that range 72 to 75, which was the area of the all-time high before. And Take a look at this. We ended up breaking out of the 52 to uh, the 55 level of support from a couple of weeks ago. So we pretty much broke out of this uh, horizontal channel from 55 down or up to about $72. And now we're trending well above this. So what could potentially happen here, guys? Again, who knows? This one can definitely go up to $90 per share on this earnings hype. But what I would personally wait for is to see more of a retracement here, maybe back down into, let's say, the, the mid-70s, right? Lower 70s for it to retest this level here, which is a new support. Remember, we were trading in this horizontal channel. We broke out of it out of the resistance of at about 72, 73, 74, that rough area. Now I would love to see a retest there and make it a new support, right? Because again, it's overbought even on this three-year week chart. Would love to see a retracement to get the RSI down a bit, the candlesticks down a bit, you know, bring that MACD down a bit as well. And this will look like a pretty solid buying opportunity, right? Me, typically, when I'm looking at swing trading, you know, especially especially swing trading or even day trading, I take into account stocks that are very high like this one. I I, I kind of manage or, or enter this or just, just view this with a very, you know, cautious uh, state of mind, right? Because I'm considering, if I'm considering putting money in at the top here, I'm telling myself, okay, me putting money here at the top 
I'm literally betting my money that this one's going to continue to push to all-time highs, right? That's kind of more risky, in my opinion, than getting in on a confirmed pullback where, let's say for this example, we got to 75, we were reversing to the upside, the RSI was down a bit, technicals were looking a bit more attractive, you know, that would be a more cons or a, a, a confirming scenario, in my opinion, for entering. So you just kind of have to understand that stocks that are extremely overbought, sure, they can pop up to higher levels. But if you're betting your money on that, that's a bit riskier, in my opinion, than getting in on a pullback. So Roku, that's pretty much the gist of it there. So ZYNE is another one that a subscriber ended up calling out. This is a pharmaceuticals company, which I don't really know much about here in terms of this particular stock. But just judging off of the, the, the technicals here and the previous price data that we're seeing, this one has gone absolutely crazy, right? A lot of the times you notice these pharmaceutical companies, these biopharma companies, they can go from penny stocks up to 20 bucks in the matter of a year, right? They get some new uh, research, some new approvals, whatever. The stock goes bananas, right, if the product hits. So this could be one of those that that ended up happening to. Again, I don't personally know this company. I haven't done much, much research into it. But based off these technicals here, that's kind of what I'm assuming. So we saw, I did look at this. They ended up beating on earnings. They came in at negative 47, and they beat uh, based off of negative 48 that was expected by the analysts. So that's pretty solid in terms of ZYN. What I'm also liking here is this um, kind of what we're seeing here is a triple top. Am I liking that? Not really. But what I am liking is if we do break that triple top, which we can see here again, if we zoom in, on the 5-day, five 5-minute, five we might be able to see it actually maybe on the 30-day, 90-minute. We can kind of see this triple top, right? We can see a strong resistance at about $13.30. So I'm not liking this uh, triple top or this this the beginning of this form of the triple top because it's not quite yet a triple top until we start to see a rejection to the downside here. But... If we see a break here is what I'm going to like a lot because that's going to be a breakout, bullish breakout pattern to the upside, right? And we're already noticing how this could be a higher low from the previous, right? This can be a point in time where ZYNE is just tuning up to break out, right? Because we're noticing the resistance, but we're also noticing a higher low from the previous. And this higher low after the first rejection was a higher low from the previous as well. So everything is looking solid here. All we need to see is just a pop out of the 1330 level start to for it to start to truck up until let's say the 1350 level for it to break out of that resistance and for it to continue the uptrend pattern. So not much to say. This is, an, this is another one that's pretty easy to analyze based off what we're seeing here. But with these ones that have gotten gone up like 800% over the past couple of weeks, these are ones to be cautious about, right? Because let's say something goes wrong. Again, I don't know about this company personally, but Let's say something goes wrong, you know, FDA does this, FDA does that, whatever ends up happening, companies like this, they can tank too, right? That's just the truth about it. So ZYNE, that's one that I'm personally watching. Thank you for the call out. CMG is the next one that we're looking at. And this is, um, it just happens to be, fun fact, one of my favorite you know, fast food, I don't really consider it fast food, I guess you can say fast dining places to eat, and that is Chipotle Mexico Grill, Mexican Grill rather, also known as ticker symbol CMG, and this is a stock that's gone absolutely parabolic, just like ZYNE, this has gone from 382, and it's almost doubled up to about $740 per share, where at this point, what I'm noticing you can't really deny the fact that there's a strong resistance at about 730-ish dollars to about, excuse me, actually, it's more towards $720, right? We got that little miscellaneous pump up here to about 739, but from there, we got the tank on earnings, and we've been just hovering around that general area. So what I would say on CMG right now is it's not really good to see 
this strong of a resistance, right? And judging off the past patterns here on CMG, you kind of notice something similar here where it plateaus for a little bit, maybe a week, a couple of weeks before popping up to a new level, right? So if we're looking at this past performance from the middle of February, you can say the same thing here. Okay, we were plateauing. Maybe it's gearing up for a big sell-off, right? But from there, it popped up aggressively, right? So we're seeing the same type of plateau pattern where at this point, either one of two things are going to happen. We're going to break out, right? We're going to start to head back up into the mid-700s. It can be a pattern that we're seeing here where we plateaued and we break out. Or we can see something like this particular pattern that happened back in October. We saw the plateau, and instead of popping out a bullish move, we dumped, right? We saw quite a bit of a sell-off from there, right? So this is something that I'm watching, and we're also looking here at the 180 SMA, which has been a support over the past couple of months. We touched it, we bounced above it, that's a good sign, but we're still having trouble getting out of that 720 level of resistance. So if we get rejected here, we especially break the 180 SMA, that's not going to be too good of a sign for Chipotle Mexican Grill. We may be heading back down to the next support, which is going to be at a about 670 we break that level it might be a downhill tumble to six hundred dollars per share but let's say we pop out you know this one could continue making all-time highs continue just rallying but with a stock like this guys i'm being a bit cautious because literally it's doubled almost doubled over the past couple of months we're seeing a strong resistance here and based off of um, whether the earnings were good or not, you know, this can definitely fluctuate the stock. And uh, we see a bunch of analysts raising it here. I forget if Chipotle did good or not on earnings, but let's say if they did have a good earnings report, which I'm assuming they did because a bunch of these analysts are raising their targets, you know, this one can very well be just plateauing for a breakout, especially on a positive earnings. So just keep an eye on that. Keep all of those in mind, especially um, with a stock like Chipotle, right? So Amazon is another one of those large cap stocks that got hit pretty badly, just like Microsoft and just like uh, uh, Apple, right? This is another one of the biggest companies in the world. This one's gone down from about 1962, right? Roughly when we got that news about Warren Buffett, Berkshire, um, you know, buying Amazon, I believe this was right around this time. Literally, the stock has been going down, right? And we notice how it's holding a support now on the 180 SMA, very typical or not typical, similar rather to Apple and Microsoft. We got the pullback of about, let's say, Four or five percent. So it got hit roughly the same as about uh, uh, roughly the same as uh, what's it called Microsoft stock. And now basic guys, basic. This is something very very easy to see. If we just maintain the 180 SMA as a support and we slowly start to truck back up on let's say a positive market move uh, this Monday and if it continues throughout the week, this could be a nice recovery play. And the resistance we're noticing now is at about 1915, where if we break that resistance and the 50 SMA, we can be very well on our ways to all-time highs. So Amazon right now, it's looking pretty solid, but this is again one of those companies that can be very volatile, especially the stock here if the market is selling off. And again, I'm uncertain on the market right now. I think there's a bunch more volatility in store. And if we do get hit, this can very well get hit as well, which would cause me really not to look uh, to swing trade this one. Maybe day trade it, but swing trading it if the pattern is looking like it's going downwards, if the markets are looking like they're going down, this could be one that you can end up losing money on, right? So Amazon, <coughs> ticker symbol AMZN, that is what I'm personally watching. So I got some requests uh, to talk about some silver ETFs here. And by silver ETFs, I was assuming USLV and DSLV, which are two that I don't really trade too much, to be completely honest. I haven't talked about these on the channel in, oh my gosh, probably like a couple of months at this point. And these are just silver ETFs that trade based upon SI, right? Slash SI, just like gold has futures, right? Slash GC, silver has futures as well. And based on um, the movement on silver here, we're noticing it's just been a straight 
downtrend, right? From the top at about 16.2, we got a double top there. We sold off. Uh, you know, we broke the moving average resi uh, supports here. We saw, we see the bearish cross of the 50 SMA crossing the 180 SMA. It's just been downhill since then. And we all know, right, these ETF combos, one goes up when the future is going down and the other one goes up when the future is going up. So DSLV is one that is going up whenever, you know, the, the future is going down. So we notice how silver is going down, right? We're noticing the downtrend here, the rejection a couple of days ago at the 180 SMA, and now we're trending below the 50 SMA. This is leading me to believe that silver wants to continue this downtrend. And this can actually be a good entry right now on DSLV if we do get further confirmation that we're trucking down, you know, into the 1450s. Maybe if we break down below, you know, 1457, 1458, and we start to push down into maybe the high 1440s, this would be a good opportunity on DSLV, right? And we're looking at this one opening up a nice margin of about 4 or 5%. We're maintaining the 50 SMA here. And again, if silver does sell off more, this one could be going up into the $35 level. And what we would need to see in terms of a, a pattern break, um, you know, a bullish pattern here on silver is for us to see you know, these candlesticks breaking out of the moving average resistances here, typically, or especially rather, this 180 SMA. We need to see that pop, and once we get that, if we get that, that's going to be a huge bullish move on USLV, which is due for a nice little run here. We just need to wait and see when silver is going to complete that move. So UGAS is another one that somebody ended up calling out. This is ticker symbol UGAZ on Another ETF that trades not on gold, not on silver, but it trades on natural gas, slash NG here. And natural gas, whenever this one's going up, you guys is going up in price as well. And we're noticing here quite a reversal pattern on natural gas, right? On the 30-day, 90-minute, actually, let's go to the 90-day, 2-hour chart. We'll be able to see it here. We notice how over the past 90 days, we've mostly been downtrending, right? The moving averages, the, the 50 SMA, the 180, both of these have been acting as resistances, right? The bearish cross, we've been just heading down and down and down until we hit $2.43. From there, we found the bottom, we popped up, right? We broke out of the simple moving average resistances, held them as new support levels. We're noticing a bullish cross now. We have a higher low here on natural gas from the previous, noting a reversing, uh, you know, confirmation of the reversing pattern to the upside. That's looking all good right now. And another thing we got was a break out of the 260 resistance, right? This is a very good sign here. 260 resistance was broken above. Now, we're looking to hold that level as a new support. And if we do that and we slowly start to pop back up into the mid-260s, this is going to be very good for you guys. So, what I'm looking for, guys, is just simply for natural gas to continue this upwards push. If we were to break down into the 250s again, that's going to be a reversal pattern to the downside. Might be time for degas, right? But if we get back up to, let's say, the 270s, maybe 280s, right? You guys could be a play over the next couple of days. So I am liking this one based off of the reversal that we are seeing on uh, natural gas. But remember, these are very volatile. They can go up 10% one day, down 10%. It's difficult to trade these um, consistently, right? So that is what I'm looking at in terms of you guys and natural gas. And the last one we're going to talk about today before I do wrap it up is Billy, guys. Good old Billy, ticker symbol B-I-L-I. -I. This is one that somebody ended up commenting. And this is very similar to the silver pattern. Remember silver futures? downtrending. They were below the moving averages. They were not yet um, showing a bullish confirmation to the upside. This is very similar to Billy, right? We're noticing the bearish cross, just like on silver futures. We're noticing rejections at the moving averages. We're pushing down, lower lows, all of that jazz. So not to spend too much time on this because I kind of broke down the same pattern on silver 
You know, until I see a break out here on Billy, you know, this is one that I'm not really going to be looking to play. But what we're seeing here is we could be getting closer to the support of this little you know, channel that we're seeing here, right? We're noticing we're getting close to that. If we bounce at, let's say, the 16 level and we slowly start to push back up, that could be a spot where maybe we'll see a bullish move on Billy. But until then, I'm just on the sidelines watching this one. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And by the way, it's Mother's Day today. So if you're a mother potentially watching this video, your wife, whatever, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there to your loved ones, to your mom, grandma, your 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 new mom, um, you know, your wife if she just had a baby, whatever. Happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. And if you enjoy the content, feel free to hit that like button. Supports me, supports the channel in general. If you're new to the channel and you want to subscribe, hit that red button, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. Drop a comment, let me know what you guys think about these picks. What are your plans this upcoming week? Where is the market headed? I would love to know. So I appreciate all you guys watching. Again, it means a lot to me for watching the content, hitting that like button. It means a lot. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your Mother's Day. Peace out.